Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem close 01. In this one, we're going to cover closing entries and the post-close trial balance. So let's take a look. All right, here we go. I have given you below the adjusted trial balance of Flyer Inc. for the year ended December 31, 2019. Your first step is to prepare the closing journal entries. And your next step then is to prepare the post-close trial balance. I am going to ask you to do it whichever way you're most familiar with, be it the closed direct to retained earnings or closed to income summary. I will show it to you both ways when I do the answer, um, but do it the way that you're familiar with and then we'll go from there. So with that said, pause the video, try this out for yourself, come back when you're ready and I'll walk through the solution. All right, here we go. So first up, we need to prepare the closing entries. I'm going to start with the direct to retained earnings method of closing entries. So let's look at this adjusted trial balance. Up top, we have some assets, then we have some liabilities, then we have some retained, uh, some shareholders equity. Those are what's known as the permanent accounts. Those are the things that do not close. The ones that close start here and go down. Your revenues and your expenses, those are the temporary accounts that need to close. How do you close an account? Well, you simply do the opposite of whatever its balance is. So for these two revenues, which total up to uh, $202,000, we are going to debit those revenues to make them go away. For these expenses, we are going to credit those expenses to make them go away. So let's start off with that. We've got to debit our revenues. So sales, rev, debit 190, interest rev, debit 12,000. That's going to make those zero out because they're currently credit balances. The other side of this, because I'm doing the direct retained earnings method, is going to be to credit retained earnings for $202,000. Now, if I do the expenses, I've got to credit all of my expenses. So COGS. 85,000, tax expense, 20,000, and SW expense, 32,000. And I'm going to scoot those over just a little bit because those are supposed to be credits. And then the accompanying debit to this will be retained earnings. And that totals up 85, uh, 105, 135, 137. Uh, thousand as a debit to retained earnings. So under the direct to retained earnings method, this is it. These are the closing entries you're going to make. You can do them separately, as I've shown here, with revenues in one and expenses in the other. You could have also simply combined them. You could have had the debits to revenue and the credits to expense all in the same entry and just put the balance, the difference between the two, um, to retained earnings. So either way would have been acceptable. All right, same problem, but now I'm going to take the income summary approach for those of you more familiar with that or who are required to know that for say your introductory course, so forth and so on. Um, the income summary approach is essentially the same thing. And in fact, what I'm gonna do to kick us off to not waste a bunch of time is I'm gonna copy the answer we already did onto this slide because we can take a very simple approach to the income summary method. And that is, instead of closing directly to retained earnings, we are going to close to income summary. Notice it's the exact same process. I kind of ran in there at the end. I'm just gonna put some for short here. It's the exact same process. We're just not dumping it straight into retained earnings. We're dumping it into income summary but this creates an extra step that's required. And that is ultimately, we then have to close income summary to retained earnings because eventually the numbers have to get into retained earnings, whether you put them there directly or you go through the income summary account first. Now the difference here, um, 202 minus 137 means that there is a $65,000 balance in our income summary account. So to get rid of that, we're gonna debit it credit retained earnings, and now we would be done with our closing entries under the income summary method. 
All right. No matter which method you use, the post-close trial balance will look the same. So notice here, I've kept my assets, my liabilities, and I've kept my common stock portion of shareholders' equity. And I've blanked out everything down here for us to update based on those closing entries. So as a result of closing entries, here's what's going to happen. Sales revenue, zero. Interest revenue, zero. COGS, zero. Tax expense, zero. Salaries expense, zero. But remember, as part of this process, we did update our retained earnings. It's 65,000 higher than it was before, and it used to be 78,000. So that is going to bump it up. Let's see, 78 plus 65, uh, 143,000, I believe. 143,000. And as with every other trial balance, you aren't done until you tally up your debits and credits and ensure they are still equal. So I'm going to pull my calculator back out. 130,000. I'm doing the debits right now. Plus 35, plus 200. Gives us debits of $365,000. Over on my credit side, 27,000 plus 20,000 plus 175,000 plus 143,000. 365. Debits and credits equal each other. We are complete with our post-close trial balance, and we are ready to start a new accounting period. All right, that's it for this one. Hope you found it helpful. Please join me for another.